Hello, Victor here at RestoringMercedes.com This is another part of S600 repair This is a Project V12 2003 S600 So, in previous parts In previous video rather I had that transmission, I took took out this car So, I, uh, I got another one I decided not to rebuild the one that I had it would have been simpler if I were to just install another one. So here it is. It's in there. It's um, it's not the one I wanted. And the seller was an asshole. And he got me another transmission. Not the one we discussed. So anyway. Um, it's still a good unit. It shifts. It's nice. It's nice. It's 85k on it. But this car, my car has 85k transmission failed but anyway so um, I took the filter off I, I checked it out it seems to be okay so I left it it I drove it shifts had to redo adaptations on it though and I probably going to re rerun adaptations you need two people when you just want to save adaptation values but anyway so I'll do it later what am I doing now so what I'm doing now is I had to do it because um, it's just uh, it's Sunday. It's 40 degrees. I have no nothing else to do, and I woke up and I decided to change engine mounts. Yes, the engine mounts. This is V12 twin turbo. This is actually the early style. I in previous videos I told you that it was the later style. No, of course this has to be the early style. Early style mounts by book. You have to take the engine out. So. I've seen quite a few posts about doing it without removing the engine. There was one guy in Well Well Nick Well Wellville Wellville Nick or something. He's in UK. I saw a couple of his pictures, very inspiring, and I decided to do the same way that he did it. And this is how you do it. Uh, at least this is how it's done. Now in order to remove the mount, you need, you need to actually get to the mount. So you see the mount is removed. You remove the mount along with the whole support. The mount sits in support that is bolted to the engine. The one bolt there. I'll get probably a little better shot. Right. You see this is like one, two. And third one I cannot even see. And the fourth one is down like uh, one, two, three. Fourth one is somewhere hidden up there. And I would just like say lots of cursing words to the designers of this because this is this is ridiculous. Anyway, I dropped the subframe. As you can see it, this is the subframe. Um, I left one bolt on the other side because I'm doing one at a time. I don't want to just drop the whole subframe as many people do because I feel that it's going to be a little easier to do one at a time. Now this one right here, um, when you do the mount, it is very advisable to replace the diaphragm on the diverter valve, which is right here. In my case, I'm gonna do mounts anyway for the time being. The reason being is this isn't the daily driver, this is a project. And most likely I will have to drop the subframe once more because I'm gonna be dealing with hydraulic lines for the suspension. I'm not switching to coilovers, I'm keeping ABC. I want ABC, I don't want the coilovers. So I'm doing the, um, the hydraulic lines, many of them are leaking and some of them are like kind of like bizarre locations and whatnot like this one is leaking so anyway so i probably will have to drop the suffering again but the thing is it's not about the suffering drop it's not really crazy but to get them bolts out this is this is what's ridiculous okay so finally they're out the other side i'll i'll do another video this is passenger side so you basically, this is what you have to do. One bolt is still holding the subframe just in case. There is a little, there is a jack over here. There is a, the jack under the transmission pan and you saw the crossbar that is very Chinese and it's not long enough. So that's another problem. It's a super Chinese one. I don't know. 
what they did here, but it's not long enough. I mean, I don't know what measurements they take, but I have my chains here, but this isn't holding the engine completely. As you saw, I have another jack. So because I couldn't do anything with it, it's not reaching the other side of the fender. So I put the piece of two by four over here just to hold it. This is this, this is sort of like an auxiliary support. So when the subframe is dropped, obviously you don't want the engine to just drop on you. <laughs> so I have this one side is on the fender. The other one is that piece of block, but this takes half the weight and most of the weight, not even half, like maybe one third. And most of the weight is held by the jack on the bottom. I just didn't want to do it just on the jack alone, just in case if it fails. Um, jack stands, obviously, because safety's first, jack stand, the wheel, and also another jack stand over here with this ramp, because I drove on the ramp first, then I jacked the car up higher. Just This is just an extra measure, just in case this one fails, it will fall on this. If it, this one fails, it falls on the wheel. I cherish my life, I guess, so I don't want to <laughs> be crushed. Now, don't mind the mess, because this was like an improvised kind of job. I was not intended to do it today, but I went because of the weather, which is okay. And it was, I have warranty on transmission, right? So I want to make sure that transmission is quiet, okay? I cannot drive this car with this transmission in it with other noises. By other noises, I mean that because engine mounts are collapsed, I have lots of drowning noise from ABC hoses. So I cannot hear transmission. I cannot hear how it shifts. I cannot hear any kind of abnormal noises coming from transmission because I have lots of other noises coming from the subframe and that is generated by collapsed engine mounts and hydraulic pump hoses. They basically lay on the subframe and vibrate like insane. You see one hose is out. Actually, you see that, that right here, that little bracket, those hoses right there, they go into this bracket. But it was so collapsed, the mounts, like I'll show you in a second, I decided to do it. Okay, so this suspension is hanging over here, just on its, on it, on the upper control arm. These things I just undid. I did not remove it from, from the knuckle. I just made them loose because again, I'm doing one at a time and they seem to be okay actually. I undid the steering which most likely I didn't have to do, but I just did it anyway. Um, but whatever, the other side, I probably will not do it. But the other side had the steering coupler from the, um, from the steering, um, from the steering wheel to the shaft, the steering gear, um, it's like a coupler, basically, the, the, the power steering rack and the actual steering shaft that goes from the steering wheel. There's a coupler in there, so I don't want to drop the subframe before I deal with that coupler. I'm not, I'm gonna do it next. I just wanna do this first. And again, I probably will have to drop the subframe. Also, there is some tension on hoses, which is kind of a problem right there. As you can see, there's a tension right there, right, right over there. But I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna have to probably deal with them hoses anyway. So I'm gonna have to replace most of them or rebuilt most of them at the hydraulic shop so i didn't don't care really much about them if you do you know obviously on a customer's car or something like that no no can do that cannot be done like that um that has to be um you know you have to relieve the pressure obviously from this hose to do that it's actually pretty simple see this hose is like sort of tense it's the um it's this hose for the a pressure valve, pressure um, pressure sensor, it tells you the pressure in the system. You can just undo this. So this is already loose. I keep undoing and redoing it, but this can be removed and zip tied so it's out the way and that's it. I just, like I said, I don't care uh, because most likely I'll redo most of the hoses anyway, so it don't matter. All right, so now let's go and look at the engine mount. What we gathered here to look at yeah, let me go put it on in the sun there it is there you got a yeah, little bugger so this is the engine mount that was in the car since 2002 this is 85,000 mile mount um mr mount what can you tell us about yourself how do you feel 
I feel pretty bad because I'm all messed up. Well, yeah, you know, quit drinking and smoking. You'll be all right. Well, anyway, this mount is completely done. Let's see. Here's the strap. Yeah, Mr. Mount, look. You can you expose yourself. What is this, a flash mob? Anyway. This is what it is. <laughs> I just opened it up right in front of you. This is ridiculous. So this is the mount on the passenger side. This was the worst. And when I lifted the engine uh, and dropped the subframe, the fluid just started gushing out. You know, guys, this is hydraulically filled mount. And obviously to remove it, you can't just get to these bolts. The newer style, right? The newer style, it has a little inter intermediate plate which sits right here like right over here and there are two bolts on the bottom of the mount that actually uh, the, the, the basically the intermediate plate can be separated from the holder and that you can do from under the car so this is the newer style like 2000 i believe 2006 they started to implement this 2005 2006 so earlier cars no no can do and also i heard that sl 600 and sl 65s you can't do this uh, because there's a different arrangement on power steering rack. Here is the brand new mount. I had these mounts. I bought it from my for my CL600 that is being repaired now, and I it turned out that those mounts were replaced at some point of time. Uh, but this, so I'm just basically going to use these mounts on this on this car. This is S600. This is the same mounts. And um, well, I don't know. 